According to good old Wikipedia, there have been 13 sets of twins to ever play in the NFL. While regular brothers or even fraternal twins may share some similarities, identical twins are a near perfect match. They tend to have the same body frame, mannerisms, and athletic ability overall. But what I found interesting is how differently some of these twins evolve. While many of them play the same position and go on to have indistinguishable careers, others go on to take totally different paths than their twin counterparts. So I decided to research as many NFL twins that I could find. And based on what I found, I have separated them into three different categories. Like I said before, most of the sets of twins who made it to the NFL played the same position. Out of the 10 that I was able to find, six of them fall into category one. Each one of these sets of twins played the same position. They went to college together, are just about the same size, and their NFL stats are similar, for the most part. Let's kick it off by talking about the least successful sets of twins in this section and work up from there. I'm just going to quickly brush over these first three due to their limited success at the professional level. Brian and Brandon Dixon grew up playing defensive back. After going to a Division II school and winning the national title, they fought their way into the NFL. The most noteworthy part of their NFL journeys was the fact that they were on the Saints together at one point, which made a bit of history. But for their professional careers, both struggled to stay on active rosters, and they are now out of the league. After being featured next to each other in Mississippi secondary, CJ and AJ Moore have become the NFL's most recent set of twins. It's still very early in their professional careers, but so far they are both playing special teams for their respective franchises. Lastly, Kerry and Keith Cash played tight end for six seasons in the 90s. Keith was more well known due to him playing with the Twilight version of Joe Montana on the Chiefs. But when you look at their career stat lines, they're nearly interchangeable. Even their best seasons were just about the same. Overall, for these three sets of twins, there's not too much else to say about their time in the NFL. Then we have the next three in this category, all of which have been more successful, starting with the McCordys. After becoming the first set of twins to start on the same team at the same time, it seems like these two could be the most similar of anyone on this list, right? However, their careers do have some key differences. Brace it with time, and it's intercepted! He threw it right into the arms of Devin McCourty, and another Going back to their college days, Devin and Jason both had become starters in Rutgers secondary in 2006. This was truly the peak of Rutgers football in recent memory. It's the team's only season they reached double-digit wins since 1976. While both brothers had proven to have NFL-level talent, Devin was always the more impressive of the two. He was more versatile, and he came out of college with more experience. Devin went on to become a first-round pick in 2010, while Jason, on the other hand, had to go a tougher route. As a sixth-round pick, which is a glorified undrafted free agent, Jason had to work his way up the depth chart, whereas Devin had become the starter right away in New England, and he's been there ever since. Jason would spend the early part of his career in Tennessee. Then, he had to go through football hell. In 2017, he signed with none other than the Cleveland Browns. I will say this, out of the 53 players on that team, just about three were even worth watching. He was one of them. Luckily for him, he was traded following the season to New England of all places, and one year later, he had become a champion alongside his brother. What I found interesting about the McCordys was that their career stat lines aren't that much different, yet Devin has all the accolades. Sure, Devin has been slightly more productive, but this is one of the perks of playing for a top tier organization. The better your team does, the more potential you have to receive individual awards. Anyways, let's move on. We have just two left in this category. The Saw Twins both entered the NFL in 1970, making them the oldest twins in this video. They played next to each other on the offensive line for Michigan State. After being drafted a few rounds apart, Rich headed to LA and Ron headed to Houston. Both would go on to struggle at first, but by year five, Rich became the Rams starting center and he began to dominate. He eventually went to six Pro Bowls in a row. Ron never found consistency in Houston, and he would end up in Washington around the same time his brother started popping off. Although Ron was more successful with the Redskins, his twin Rich had still outperformed him. Overall though, there's pretty limited information about these two. But one interesting fact I found was that they played their last official NFL game against one another. Ron and the Redskins went on to win that game. Now, that leaves us with just one set of twins in this section. 
two brothers who have been so dominant, no one else in this video tops their collective success. Of course, I'm talking about the Pounceys. After ranking out as the 15th and 16th best guards in the nation during high school, the Pouncey twins went on to dominate at the University of Florida. They were so good that it almost became a game of who could earn more accolades. Just when you thought Mike had proven himself to be the better player being a two-time All-American, Marquise went ahead and took the cake by winning the Remington Trophy, which is given to the best center in the country. Their success didn't stop there. Marquise entered the NFL draft a year before his brother. He was the top center prospect and would go first round 18th overall to the Pittsburgh Steelers. One year later, not only did Mike post nearly identical combine stats to his brother, he was also the number one center in his draft. He was then taken with nearly the exact same pick. Eight years after they were both officially in the NFL, the Pouncey Twins played together in the Pro Bowl. This marked the first time this had ever happened. With Mike Pouncey, Mike's waiting on his brother. Your brother, a lot of, lot of media requirements. Superstar, man, he done been in like 12 Pro Bowls, so they love him out here. And, uh, media won't leave him alone. We need one of the media guys telling us the last question. <laughs> the only real difference between these two is what Mike just said. His brother Marquise had been arguably the best center in football, going to the Pro Bowl all but one year of his career. Mike had been very successful himself, but just not at the caliber that his brother had been at. I guess you can throw in the fact that Mike has played for a whopping two teams compared to Marquise just playing for one. Overall though, their careers since high school are so similar, they're one of the most inseparable duos on this list. Ultimately, of the six sets of twins in category one, they're all pretty similar to their twin when directly compared to them. But we're just getting started. Because of how much differently these two sets of brothers developed, I will be spending more time on them than I did in the previous section. Let's start it off with the Griffin twins. Back at Lakewood High School in Florida in 2012, both Shaquem and Shaquille Griffin played defensive back. Looking at their scouting reports, they were about the same size and athleticism, but their skill sets differed slightly. Shaquem was considered to have better instincts and helped out more at the line of scrimmage. Shaquille was more often on the back line of the defense and excelled in coverage. However, the biggest difference between these two is the fact that Shaquem only has one hand. Despite similar scouting grades, Shaquille had received looks from bigger schools that Shaquem did not. Even with opportunities to go to schools like LSU and Miami, Shaquille passed on them so he could continue to be around Shaquem. The twins would both go on to sign with the University of Central Florida. Once both brothers arrived on campus, that's when their development would take two separate paths. While Shaquille transitioned smoothly into the same position he played in high school, the coaching staff decided to make a change in Shaquem's development, slowly morphing him from defensive back to linebacker. This was most likely due to his limitations with one hand. While it would be insanely difficult to try and defend passes in the air, it's relatively easier to wrap up ball carriers. Shaquem was very undersized for a Division I linebacker, so they put more weight on him to be able to handle the change. By the time their college careers were winding down, Shaquem outweighed Shaquille by 30 pounds. Remember, they were the same weight when they got there. Following the 2016 season, Shaquille possessed the size and athleticism needed to project well to the next level, and Seattle drafted him in the third round. Shaquem still had one more year left at UCF. And for anyone who paid attention at all to college football that season, then you know how incredible it went for Shaquem. After the team had been just awful two years before, UCF finished the season undefeated, and Shaquem had been one of the best players in the entire nation. For how well Shaquem has done with one hand is truly inspirational. But let me tell you about the most underrated part of his journey. Despite the fact that he was carrying an extra 30 pounds, he hardly lost any of his athleticism. For example, his brother Shaquille ran a blistering 4.38 at the combine. That's ridiculously fast for anyone. Shaquem would go on to run the exact same time. This had set an NFL combine record for linebacker prospects. His unbelievable performance was enough to have Seattle look past the fact that he only had one hand and they selected him in the fifth round. Not only did Shaquem become the first one-handed player in NFL history, he had also been reunited with his brother. This was truly the feel-good story of 2018. 
Now, it's still early in their professional careers, but so far, Shaquille has flourished. He is a cornerstone on the Seahawks defense and was a pro bowler this last season. Shaquem has mostly been a backup, playing on special teams and rotating in at linebacker from time to time. Whether or not he's able to find the same success as his brother, this has been one hell of a story so far. We can only hope to see more of these two together in the future. Third down and nine, blitz sack. Play made by Shaquem Griffin. Looking at our other duo in Category 2, the Hollister twins have one significant difference compared to everyone else in this video, and that's the fact that they went to completely different colleges. Well, actually, at first they did. Here, let me explain. Back in their high school days, with Jacob at quarterback and his brother Cody as his main target, the two went on to win the state title as seniors, but their high school dominance wasn't enough for them to earn a scholarship. They both ended up walking on at the University of Nevada. The harsh reality of college sports hit quick. The Hollisters found themselves on the scout team all freshman year with no signs of hope for the future. So they both made the decision to leave after that season and they enrolled at the junior college Arizona Western. Here's where things get interesting. First off, Jacob decided to move from quarterback to tight end. After a successful year of junior college football, Wyoming saw potential in him and Jacob accepted a scholarship to go play there. Cody had also received an offer from Wyoming but he had been one of the best junior college receivers in the nation, and he had earned a scholarship to Arkansas. After putting a lot of thought into it, the opportunity to go play in the SEC was too much to pass up, and thus, the twins had officially been separated. The next three years went by, and just like the Griffins, Jacob now outweighed Cody by 30 pounds. By the end of Jacob's college career at Wyoming, he was reasonably productive. Cody, on the other hand, had struggled to make much of an impact. It's safe to say his career at Arkansas was a disappointment. Overall, both twins didn't seem like they had done enough to go pro. But guess who decided to give both of them a call? Bill Belichick. The Patriots have been notorious for picking up relatively unknown players. These two were no exception. Two years would go by, and both brothers had been part of a Super Bowl winning team. But Jacob barely played, and Cody didn't get a single snap. The Patriots let Cody go, and he's now a member of the Tennessee Titans, still struggling to find playing time. Jacob was traded to Seattle for pennies on the dollar, and he was demoted to the practice squad before the 2019 season began. Six weeks later, the team decided to promote him to the active roster. Typically, you don't see recently promoted players get too much action on the field, especially in overtime. But within a few weeks of being promoted, this happened. We're gonna go man and bring some pressure. That matchup we've been talking about is right there. Could you have made it to the NFL had it not been for your twin brother? I couldn't imagine being here without without my brother. L. Dean, DK Metcalf. Really the one that taught me a lot of what I know. He invested in you. The time and, and effort that he's invested in me is a big part of where I'm at today. DK Metcalf. Second and goal from the 10. Wilson fires. Hollister. Touchdown. Tiki Barber because Ooh. four years out of the game, he thought maybe he could do this again. Didn't work out so well. Yeah. In fact, he had one call. The Dolphins brought him in. Didn't work out. His agent is flabbergasted that nobody showed interest. You may remember Tiki and Rondé Barber from back in the 2000s. They are perhaps the most intriguing storyline of all the twins in this video. This is because they played on opposite sides of the ball and their career paths went two separate directions, but not for the reasons you may think. First, let's talk about their similarities. Both twins were incredible at what they did on the field. After receiving scholarships to play at Virginia, Tiki and Rondé went on to dominate at their respective positions, and they were drafted one round apart in 1997. Tiki had become a star by 2001, helping lead the Giants to the Super Bowl. They ultimately lost that game. He would go on to have a monstrous six-year run to end his career, which included three Pro Bowl appearances in a row. Rondé was stellar as well. He led the NFL in interceptions in 2001. 
In 2002, he was a vital role in the Buccaneers Super Bowl run. He took a pick to the house against the Eagles in the NFC Championship. It's easily his most iconic moment and one of the greatest interceptions in NFL history. After 16 years in the NFL, Rondé retired a five-time Pro Bowler and a Super Bowl champion. Now, it's time to look at their differences. From a young age, the biggest difference between Tiki and Rondé was their personality. While Rondé was more of a team guy and rarely gave an interesting quote, Tiki always had something to say. His desire to express himself ultimately led to the most shocking moment of his NFL career, and that was deciding to announce midway through the 2006 season that he would be retiring after the year was finished. Things would only go downhill for him after that. Here to extend my warmest welcome to, to Tiki as the newest member of the NBC Universal family. Eli Manning, after three years, your assessment. He didn't feel like his voice was going to be strong enough, and it showed. I mean, sometimes it's almost comical the way that he would say things. So basically, your leaving is a good thing for Eli. Is <laughs> I think it is say. a good thing uh, for Eli to tell you the truth. This is not a dude that broke up with his girlfriend. This is not a, new, a dude that had baby mama drama or anything like that. This is a dude who was married in the public eye because he was working for NBC television. The wife is pregnant when he left her. Don't tell me that doesn't count against you in a catastrophic fashion. <laughs> In just four years, Tiki had gone from having his name chanted for his last game in the Giants stadium to being booed by those same fans. It was wild enough thinking that he retired during his prime. Then with everything that happened, including a failed NFL comeback years later, Tiki's legacy had truly been tarnished. For Rondé, he was basically known as Tiki's twin in Tampa. For example, in this two-minute clip from Colin Coward's show titled, Was Rondé Barber Overshadowed by Tiki Barber? They didn't spend a single second of the video talking about Rondé. This is unfortunate that it happened this way because all Rondé did was ball out. Overshadowed by his brother's spotlight, Rondé was one of the best defensive backs in the league. This was highlighted by the fact that he was named to the NFL All-Decade Team. It's a travesty that Rondé is not in the Hall of Fame. So if you've been counting, then you know that we only have one set of twins left to discuss, and are most different at that. Meet Rowley and Reggie McKenzie. The McKenzie twins played both ways in high school, but once they arrived at Tennessee, they both began to focus on playing on one side of the ball. Reggie became a linebacker, and Rowley played center on the offensive line. They went on to be drafted one round apart, and entering the NFL, Rowley weighed 291, as opposed to Reggie only weighing 240. Reggie would go on to have a weird career. He was a failed draft pick for the Raiders. Then he spent three years out of the NFL coaching high school football. He tried to make a comeback to the NFL after being away for a few years. That ultimately failed. He loved the game, but being on the field wasn't going to happen. So he returned to Tennessee to help coach. One year later, he re-entered the NFL as a scout for the Packers. Riley, on the other hand, was dominant. He became a cornerstone on the Redskins offensive line, otherwise known as the Hogs O-Line. He helped Washington win two Super Bowls. Riley played in Washington for 10 years before moving on. A few seasons later, he wound up signing with the Green Bay Packers. Coincidentally, his brother was a member of the team's front office. This was a pretty crazy experience for the both of them. Eventually, Riley retired after 16 seasons. He's considered one of the greatest Redskins ever. Reggie only played for five seasons but he found success in his own way by moving into the front office realm of the game and being a part of two Super Bowls with the Packers. He eventually worked all the way up to general manager of the Raiders. At this point, things had come full circle and he hired his twin to work for him. Even now, the McKenzie legacy lives on. Reggie's son, Khalil, entered the NFL draft in 2018. Imagine you're a potential draftee and your dad is one of the general managers that can possibly draft you. Sadly, his dad didn't pick him. Still, what a cool story for the McKenzie family. So with wrapping up this video, I thought I would tell a quick story. Many of you know who Buddy Ryan was. He was the defensive coordinator of the famous 85 Bears defense. Anyways, 
but he had three sons, one of which was Rex. Rex Ryan would go on to become a successful NFL head coach, leading the Jets to back-to-back -to -back AFC Championship appearances with Mark Sanchez. Eventually, he was fired and went to Buffalo. He would really let himself go. He was nowhere near the coach he once was, and oh, wait, never mind. That's just his twin brother Rob. My bad.